Hello, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to calculate integrals using integration by parts. And in this video I'm going to go through two different examples, one of an indefinite integral and one of a definite integral, and I'll timestamp all of the bits below. So we're going to be using integration by parts if we have a product of functions that we want to integrate. Okay, And this is kind of like the inverse or the opposite of the product rule for differentiation. And so I'll show you the formula okay, for integration by parts. It's in this red box here. And it does look confusing, but like a lot of things in maths, it might look hard, but it's actually pretty easy. okay. And all it says is, if we want to integrate something, okay, which is a product of functions, so in this case, some function u, and another function, which is the derivative of v, so they've been multiplied together and we want to take their integral, then that's just equal to the product of u and v, subtract the integral of v multiplied by the derivative of u. Now, like I said, this looks confusing, but in an example, it will make a bit more sense. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one, where we want to integrate 3x multiplied by e to the x with respect to x. So hopefully you can see our two functions are going to be uh, 3x, and our other function is going to be e to the x. Now, if we look at the formula, which I've got written quite small over there, you can see we've got a u and a derivative of v. So how do we know which one is which? Well, <clears throat> it, there's not really a set rule for working it out. Okay, The way I would look at it is, whichever one looks easiest to differentiate, or whichever one when you differentiate will give you a nicer answer, that's what you want to set equal to u. Okay? So I've got 3x and e to the x. Now if I differentiate 3x, I get 3. That's quite nice. That's just a constant. That's just a number. If I differentiate e to the x, I get e to the x, which is not necessarily bad, but e to the x has... A, a variable in it, it's got algebra in it. So I'm going to pick 3x as my value of u. So here's how I would set it out. So I'm going to set my u equal to 3x, which means the other part, okay, my dv by dx, is going to be my e to the x. And so I'm going to write dv by dx equal to e to the x. So now if we look at the other side of our integration by parts, this part over here, I want to know what v is, which means I'm going to have to integrate this dv by dx. And I also want to know what the derivative of u is, which means I want to take the derivative of u. So I'm just going to quickly calculate those parts now. So if we take the derivative of u, we get du by dx. That's just equal to 3. And if I integrate dv by dx, so I integrate e to the x, that's just going to give me e to the x, which is equal to v. So once I've done that, I can rewrite my integral and use my integration by parts formula, I guess, to rewrite it. So currently we have, let's move this down a bit just so you can still see it. So we currently have the integral of 3x e to the x with respect to x. Now I'm just going to substitute each part into my integration by parts formula. So we've got uv, so that's this part here. So that's equal to uv, so 3x e to the x. Subtract the integral of v multiplied by the derivative of u. So that's v it's multiplied by the derivative of u like that. So we're calculating the integral of 3 e to the x with respect to x. And that's quite easy to integrate. So we get an answer of 3x e to the x. And the integral of 3 e to the x, well, that's going to be negative, if we worked it out, 3 e to the x, plus our constant of integration, because this is an indefinite integral. And we could factorize out this 3 e to the x, and we get an answer of 3 e to the x x minus 1 plus our constant of integration as our answer. So hopefully that made sense. Let's now look at another example. And in this one, we've got a definite integral, which means we have limits on our integral, okay? So in this example, we're calculating the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of 3x multiplied by sine of x. So again, same thing applies. Let's bring down the formula as well, actually, just so it's easier. So we're going to pick one thing to be equal to u and one thing to be equal to the derivative of v. And I'll just write v dash for the derivative of v. So which one's going to integrate to something nicer? Is it going to be 3x, which is going to be 3, or sine of x, which is going to differentiate to be uh, cos of x? Well, I think 3x is a bit nicer to differentiate, so I'm going to set that equal to u, which means my sine of x is going to be equal to my derivative of v. So now I'm going to take the derivative of u, which is 3, and I'm going to integrate v dash, or I'm going to take the int or I'm going to integrate sine of x. And if we integrate sine of x, that goes to negative cos of x, like this. And from here, I'm just going to put the, everything I know into my formula for integration by parts. So we're going to be integrating between 0 and pi by 2, and we want to find the integral of 3x multiplied by sine of x with respect to x. 
So here's how it's going to work. First part is uv, so that's u multiplied by v. Okay, so we've got 3x, or negative 3x multiplied by cosine of x. And because this is a definite integral, we're going to evaluate this part now. So let's put in our little square brackets, 0 and pi by 2. And you could actually substitute those in and get a value, but I'm going to leave it for a second because I'm going to show you a nice trick that makes it quite easy to do at the end. So then we're going to then subtract from that the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of v, which is this part here, multiplied by the derivative of u. So the integral of negative 3 cosine of x with respect to x. So now, like I said, I'm going to leave this to still be evaluated, and you'll see why at the end, so cos of x. But if you wanted to, you could evaluate it now and you'd get the same answer. And we're then going to subtract from that the integral of negative 3 cos of x between the limits of 0 and pi by 2. Now, because this negative 3 is a constant, okay, I'm going to factor it or pull it out to the front of my integral. So we would have negative negative 3, so that's just the same as plus 3 times the integral of between pi by 2, uh, 0 and pi by 2 of cos of x with respect to x. So now that's pretty easy to evaluate. The integral of cos of x, well, that's just sine of x. And so we're going to get, uh, if we evaluate negative 3x cos of x between 0 and pi by 2, plus, okay, so if we integrate cos of x, we get sine of x, so plus, and we can times it by that 3, so 3 sine of x between the limits of 0 and pi by 2. Now, here's what we can do that makes this a lot easier than just evaluating this right at the start. Because we're evaluating them between the same limits, okay, we can just push them together and evaluate them at the same time. So we could actually rewrite this as negative 3x cosine x plus 3 sine of x, okay, between the limits of 0 and pi by 2. And that's a lot easier to evaluate than doing it all separately. At least I think it is. So I'm going to use my calculator now just to substitute everything in. So we've got negative 3 multiplied by pi by 2. So pi by 2 multiplied by cosine of pi by 2 plus 3 times sine of pi by 2. And then we're going to, which gives us 3. And then we're going to subtract from that. What happens when we substitute in 0? Well, negative 3 times 0 times cos of 0 is 0. Okay, plus 3 times sine of 0 is also 0, so we're going to subtract 0, and we get an answer to our integral of 3, which is quite a nice answer. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe, and share, and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.